Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use the EXS24 sampler in Logic. The EXS24 is a good built-in sampler that comes with Logic and has a lot of capabilities. So a big function of the sampler is that it's what a lot of instrument sounds run through in Logic. It's what produces all the bass, piano and orchestral sounds, along with a lot of keyboards and synths. So to load in any preset sample from it, you click in between these plus and minus buttons here, click on that, go down to factory and it'll bring down another drop menu of all the instruments you can choose from. You can then edit this sample with all the parameters you see here. Some parameters will change the sound more than others depending on what preset you've chosen. So I'll explain what each section does and what each dial does, then play a bass loop to show you how it affects the sound. But first of all we have the global parameters. Here we have keyboard modes where you have polyphonic, monophonic and legato. Polyphonic allows multiple notes to be played simultaneously, monophonic will only play one note at a time, and legato is also monophonic except you'll need to release each key before a new key is pressed. Unison mode. When active, it will play several samples at once, all of which are slightly detuned from one another, which can make for a very thick sound. The voice and used fields. The voice fields show how many notes you can play at once, and the used shows you how many notes you're actually using. The velocity offset field. This will increase or decrease the note velocity by up to plus or minus 127. This is used to expand or limit dynamic range. The hold via field. This determines the source of the modulation. And the crossfade parameters. These allow you to crossfade between layered samples. Here you have the pitch parameters. The tune knob. This will increase or decrease the pitch of a sample by a semitone at a time. The transpose field. This effectively does the same thing except it moves the zones that the samples are loaded into so it will affect the pitch that way. The random knob. This applies random detuning to every note played. It changes the tuning in cents and there are 100 cents per semitone. This can be good for emulating string instruments which can make them sound more realistic and help thicken them up. The fine knob. This is used to tune samples that have been loaded to correct their tuning if they're slightly out. Again, this works in sense, so it can be very precise. Pitch bend. This will determine the limits of pitch bending in semitones. This can be used by using your keyboard's bend wheel and having a value of zero will disable bends. The glide and pitch sliders. These are a bit more complicated. The glide will determine the time for one note to slide to another, and how it does that will depend on the pitch slider. So of course having the pitch centre is neutral, but if the pitch is set to a value higher than your centre, the note will slide down from that many semitones above the note you've played. So if we increase the glide slightly to activate it, and if we move the pitch of five semitones above our note, if I were to play a C, it would then play an E and slide down to the C. And this becomes more apparent the higher the glide is set to. And of course, if the value is set lower, it will be the other way around. So if we drop that back to zero, and five semitones lower, and play our C, it will slide up to C. And what's interesting is that if you set both the values so neither are on zero, how it slides is determined by velocity. So we put both of them on 12. You can see if I play a key hard, so with a high velocity, the note slides down. But if I play it softly with a low velocity, the key slides up. Next is the filter parameters. This changes the cutoff, resonance, drive and the key. So first you have the fat button. This preserves the lower frequencies of the loaded sample, the cutoff knob. This sets the cutoff frequency of the filter, resonance knob. This boosts or cuts the frequencies around the cutoff frequency. And down here you have the filter and the slope buttons. These buttons determine what type of filter you use and what slope it has. So here you have a HP or high pass filter and this allows frequencies above the cutoff to pass through. LP, it's low pass filter, and this allows frequencies below the cutoff to pass. For low pass, you can also choose how much you want to boost or cut the frequencies by, whereas you can't do that with the other buttons. And BP, for band pass. This allows frequencies directly around the cutoff to pass, all the other frequencies are cut. The drive knob. This overdrives the filter input, so turning up the drive produces a more saturated signal, which introduces more harmonics. The key knob. This determines the amount of cutoff frequency modulation by note number. When the knob is to the full left, the frequency stays the same and will be applied to each note, but if it's to the full right, it will follow the note exactly. This is good for avoiding overly filtered high notes. D 
This is the modulation section. This is quite a complicated section, so I won't be going into it in this video, but I'll do a follow-up video on how to use it. It involves a lot of routing and choosing different sources and destinations to achieve different sounds. And down here we have the LFOs. These are what you can use to produce your own sounds. The EG knob. This controls the time it takes the LFO modulation to fade in and out. The rate knobs. This defines the speed of the LFO's modulation. The left side shows the speed in note length and the right side shows it in hertz. The wave buttons. These buttons determine which waveform is assigned to each LFO, left side being for LFO1 and right side being for LFO2. And lastly we have the ADSR envelope. This changes the attack, decay, sustain and release settings, which I'll be going into in my next video. But you can get a good idea of what they do by listening to me change them whilst I play the bass line. So those are all the main parameters used. I'll do several follow-up videos on this to show you how to do routing and how to load in your own samples. This is a good first step to understand how it functions. I hope this video has been useful and if you have any questions please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.